Now, what is the benefit of all this cleansing? And the answer is that there is very little known benefit to any of these practices. Upwards of 99% of the population engages in some form of cleansing ritual. That involves using a shampoo for your scalp, a facial wash or a cleanser for your face, shower gel or a body wash for the body, also using some form of a physical abrasive like a scrub, a brush, a loofah, a sponge, what have you, and of course, hot water. The problem? There is no proven benefit to any of these practices or products. Now, I imagine most of you are completely shocked by the statements. You're probably asking, but what about the smell? What about the dirt? What about the bacteria? What about this? What about that? How am I going to live? Well, the answer very briefly is that all these questions are stemming from one source, and that is the skincare industrial complex, which has infiltrated the public narrative and has convinced everyone, pretty virtually everyone, that they need to scrub themselves silly from head to toe as if their skin was a pot or a dish or a utensil that needs to be cleaned like an inanimate object. That cannot be farther from the truth. So we're dealing with a made up need to wash or cleanse the skin. Now, what is the benefit of all this cleansing? And the answer is that there is very little known benefit to any of these practices, starting from shampooing through cleansing of the face through cleansing of the body and with a few exceptions of dealing with actual problems like a strong body odor for which you can use soap under the skin folds or treat actual medical conditions with a medicated wash for a limited time. With the exception of those few practices, there is very little evidence to support the benefit of any of these practices. But what is the downside you might ask? What's the harm in cleaning? Well, there's plenty of harm because if you look at every single one of these practices, including hot water, including detergent use, and including the use of any physical abrasive, the common denominator of all these practices is that they actually undermine and compromise the top layers of the skin, otherwise known as the skin barrier, many of which directly affect, adversely affect, the microbiome, which is the microbial population that inhabits the upper layers of the skin and is an integral part of the skin. So there's actual harm from using these products from which we assume, whether or not we're saying it or not, that the skin actually recovers. How does the skin recover? Well, we assume that the skin recreates and reproduces those layers that were scrubbed off and stripped off the surface of the skin and replenishes that with either the help of a moisturizer from above or by itself. Now, how do we know it actually restores and bounces back from the damage that is induced with skincare products such as the cleansing category? Well, the answer is we don't really know how the skin recovers. And most people are very happy to use skincare products such as those cleansing categories of products and are very content using them until something actually goes wrong and the skin becomes too sensitive or too weak to put up with the abrasive practices and is unable to restore its lost barrier. But as long as the skin appears normal and feels normal, most people are happy to use these products with abandon. Well, some of you more ardent believers in the washing and the cleansing rituals ask, what about the dirt? And the answer is, there is no dirt. The so-called dirt are elements of the upper layers of the skin forming the skin barrier. How do these come off? Well, they come off when they're good and ready, usually with water and nothing but. They don't need a whole category of products to help them come off. They'll come off when they're good and ready and you'll be just fine. And again, some of you may be asking, but what about the bacteria, the dangerous bacteria? As I said earlier, the skin is inhabited by countless microbes, bacteria, and other types of microbes that form the microbiome. There's no evidence to suggest that crushing or pressuring that population of microbes with any type of cleansing has any sort of health benefits. But you'd be surprised to know that in people who actually are forced by virtue of their work to clean their skin habitually and frequently, 
the skin barrier suffers tremendously. That happens in healthcare workers. They're forced to wash their hands in the course of the work to prevent the spread of infection, severely damaging their skin, turning it into dry, sensitive, and irritable skin, and actually risking colonization with actual harmful bacteria. In summary, use moderation when cleaning your skin. Wash most of your body with lukewarm water and address issues like body odor by using a gentle soap under the skin folds. Obviously, wash your hands to prevent the spread of infection when appropriate. Do not use hot water to do even hand washing. Use lukewarm water as hot water scalds the skin and induces all sorts of changes that can make the skin more sensitive. Stop treating your skin like a dirty dish. If you want to see more video like this one, hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to share and like this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.